Hello, I'm Zoe, and this is Absolver. I'm going to start a new game so you can see how it all works. Uh, I want to apologize in advance for the video quality. The problem is um, I got a new computer in. The uh, the video card was supposed to be a GeForce uh, GTX 730 uh, with uh, 4 gigabytes of memory. It, that card doesn't work, so I had to resort to using the onboard uh, Intel HD until I can until I can get another uh, a better video card, and that required turning down a lot of the settings on this game to prevent it from lagging. Yeah, I'll go with that. Um, there are three starting styles in um, in the game, with an additional fourth to be unlocked. And later on, uh, the the developer Slow Clap has said that there's going to be another style added to the game. Uh, now, the reason why I'm going to go with Windfall is because the other two uh, methods are a little bit tricky to use right now uh, online. Um, basically, let, let's just start with the Windfall one and, and then I can explain along the way why the other ones are a little more difficult to use. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, Absolver is a martial arts game. Oh, sorry. Intro. Okay. Absolver is a martial arts game focused mainly around hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, although you can use swords and spiked gauntlets. There is the possibility that there may be other weapons int introduced into the series later. As you saw from the intro, uh, you were chosen by your master to uh, put on this mask and fold into a training ground slash alternate dimension in a process called folding. And uh, so here's the le the Plains of a Doll. It's very pretty. Uh, I very much like the game world. It's uh, uh, of course it looks better on on PS4 than it does on my system right now. But once I have a uh, GeForce card, it'll it'll look much better. But it's it's um, it's kind of like a a watercolor style of, of world 
uh, very pretty, very, very pretty full, yes. Um, and and the button's not working. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. The the um, starting styles of the game are uh, Windfall, Forsaken, and Cult. Now, um, they all can use the same attacks um, because you assemble your, your combat deck based off of the moves of other characters. But each, uh, each class has a different defensive capability. And so, for instance, Windfall when you use the right stick, uh, moving the right stick left or right will cause you to dodge left or right. Moving the stick up will cause you to jump so that you can dodge low attacks, uh, sweeping kicks, things like that. And then pushing down will cause you to duck, missing high punches and high kicks. Um, cult is a the defensive capability is called Absorb, and if you hit the right stick in any direction just before the moment of impact of a punch, you will effectively dodge, uh, or I'm sorry, you will effectively absorb the attack, and part of your health bar will turn white. If you counterattack while that part of the health bar is still white, then you will recover that health. It's kind of like Bloodborne's uh, health system in that respect. Um, and then there's Forsaken, and it's a parry system. If you, if you uh, use left or right on the right stick just before the moment of impact, then you can then you can parry the attack, which temporarily stuns the opponent and allows you to get in an extra hit or two. Cult and, uh, and Forsaken can be tricky to use online right now because with the lag, it's, it's harder to time that exact moment of impact and you can often miss it. When you can hit it, both Cult and Forsaken can be very, very effective styles. I've used all the schools at this point, and I can see the benefits to them. But right now, I tend to use either Windfall or the fourth style that you unlock within the game, the Stagger style. Okay, apparently not in the right stance for this. There we go. Stances are uh, fairly important uh, because they determine which attacks you use from which direction. Um, you can by by changing your your stance, you can make combos. Oh, she's just gonna turtle. Okay. Okay. Like, for instance, what this is training you to do is to use the forward-left stance to use a high kick and smash down the door. Um, this, by the way, does not apply to any doors anywhere else in the game. It's just a little tutorial thing. And these poor schmucks do not respond at all. They're just, they're just here for extra XP, I guess. I can't really explain the combat deck until, until I get, uh, 
to the end of the tutorial section because it won't even let you open it for right now. Um, I don't know why they really try to, to focus on using the circle to dodge because the dodge distance is almost always countered by an opponent's forward uh, momentum for their attack. It doesn't matter how short a punch is, they're still going to pretty much catch up to you. So if you're going to dodge, you're going to want to dodge to the side or uh, duck under an attack. But it's it's practically useless to use the circle dodge for right now. Uh, the only way that you can really use that is if you start dodging well before an enemy is in your range and that allows you to stay out of range but at the cost of quite a lot of stamina. Um, So here we have the door that leads into the actual proper area, but find and defeat Ceylon. You have to defeat uh, the first marked boss to, to get inside. This, by the way, is a save point. If I happen to die against anybody, I'll come back to this spot. Now, you'll see those little circles pop up, and what that is, is a signifier of moves that I've, I've earned some experience on. Let me see if I can... yeah, okay. By blocking or dodging at just the right time, you will see a circle pop up, and that signifies that you've gain some experience learning that one particular move. Uh, there's a caveat to this in that in order to, to actually collect that experience, you do have to win the fight. So if you unlock a move and then you lose the fight, well, tough luck. You lose all of that experience. You have to, you have to get it back. And this is not a complaint for me. It's a, it's a fascinating system that um, that rewards uh, both taking the time to learn moves and then uh, finding a way to counter them so that you can beat your opponent. This, th These early level uh, characters are not really all that difficult. And the re whole reason why I'm blocking is just to gain some extra experience on their moves. I mean, they are pretty easy to take down. They're not gonna prove much of a challenge. But they're not supposed to. They're supposed to to help you understand the basics of the game. And as you can see, uh, whenever you gain some experience in a, in a move, it'll show up as a little uh, blue part of the bar. The white part is the experience you've always you've already learned. You have to get uh, it all the way around to a completed circle before it'll unlock a move. And I'm not going to bother with that because all of these moves can be learned in the starting areas pretty easily. And here's Scylla. I see, as I said, uh, dodge helps create some effective space, but 
only so long as you're not already in their their range. Otherwise, you can hit the dodge button, but they're still going to actually connect most of the time. Well, dropped my guard a little bit too soon. You missed. Okay. Okay, what you saw me use there is the special ability um, by using left on the D-pad, I, I used um, the ability to uh, regenerate health. That's an interesting mechanic because when you first hit it, you get a, a small boost of health, but and then a very slow... Uh, trickle of regeneration but if you attack an enemy you'll gain back a larger portion of health and if you can continue to chain uh, attacks you can gain back all of your health if the enemy hits you at any time you your regenerative effect stops so if you throw down the health and they punch you immediately thereafter you get no benefits out of it it's a uh, it's a very interesting mechanic. Um, the regenerative health requires that these two little crystals on the back be fully charged and glowing. Uh, that is called focus. And, uh, and you gain focus by uh, successfully defending against attacks or by or by throwing attacks. You'll slowly regenerate, or you'll slowly generate focus. So now we can open this door. Talk to this fine fellow right here. Okay, so here's the meditation screen, and you hit practice, and then you go edit your combat deck, and that will allow you to change moves or add them. Right now I don't have much of anything to, to put in these, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one here. And as you, as you progress in levels, you unlock more uh, spaces in your combat deck until you have four on each button, and then you have an alternate attack for uh, each direction of your stances. What makes this, this game interesting is that, okay, yes, you can technically win matches by just mashing one button but eventually somebody's going to catch on to what you're doing and then they're going to counter you. So what you ideally want to do is be able to hit one button to get the uh, stance facing in the right direction and then use the other button to have an alternate attack. You can make your own combos in this way and since you can unlock um, moves and then use whichever ones you want. You don't have to be stuck to the windfall style attacks if you uh, want to use Cult or uh, Forsaken or Stagger. 
So in this way, you're you're actually allowed quite a lot of leeway. All the school really d does is determine which defensive method you use. And so now here we are in a doll or heading towards a doll proper. First we have to get there. This is one minor, minor frustration with playing the single player mode in that um, you can often be ganged up on by several gr uh, groups of enemies. But as you've just seen, um, the enemies attacks will hit each other. And I, I really like that. That's something that I often complain about in other video games. You know, why do enemy attacks pass through each other? And the answer is because it's easier for them to program uh, gangbangs. Uh, but in this game, if somebody does a roundhouse kick and it hits their friends, it's, uh, it's going to hurt their friends. And similarly, if you're playing online and you decide to co-op with somebody, you have to be aware of where your attacks are going because it is entirely possible for you to kick your teammates in the head. So that adds an interesting level of challenge to some of the online fights where you've got like uh, four NPCs and three and three player characters and uh, everybody's swinging and, and moving around and you know you're, you're trying to aim a roundhouse kick for, for your enemy but you end up hitting your friend who's standing beside you. I, if I haven't made it clear already, I really like this game. Uh, just because of... It's a good premise. It really is. Um, the, the, the combat deck, the ability to make up your own moves. I went the wrong way. <laughs> uh, the single player is very slim. I actually beat the entire single player mode in under two hours. I'm not going to do that this time around. I'm going to break these up to, into shorter episodes. Basically go find one of the marked ones, fight them, and then that'll be the end of the episode. So, you obviously, you, you can't go back to the tutorial area to, um, to learn uh, moves from Salon, but it's okay. Everything that Salon could teach you, you can learn within the rest of the game from other NPCs. And you can grind for, for moves, uh, or farm for them, uh, using just the offline mode so that you can build up a deck and... I think it's a better way to do it this way. Take out the marked ones, take on the, the named bosses, finish off the single player so that you have enough moves to to not be uh, weak on online play, and then turn on the internet connection and play the multiplayer side of things. And I really, really like the graphics of this world. There is a minor complaint, but I'll get to it in just a moment once I can show it.
This is altars. You can consider them bonfires because they effectively accomplish the same thing. They're save points. They're, when you're online, they're how you access the combat trials. See, combat trials and social. You effectively uh, enter these here. You can also enter schools. There's only one school in the offline. That's the stagger school, and it requires uh, getting to level 25, finding a master of the stagger style, just basically drunken kung fu, uh, Jin Meska, defeating him, and then that'll unlock a door that will let you get to the mentor of the stagger school. And stagger is is a really good style. Uh, it's 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 got the same dodges as windfall, but with a punch or kick, so it's offense and defense at the same time. I like it a lot. But here we have the map, um, the the little white um, trapezoid represents uh, the the door to the final boss, Rizrin. These yellow dots represent uh, marked marked ones, and you have to defeat all of them, and those red dots represent named bosses. You have to defeat all of those in order to uh, unlock the door to get to Rizrin. And here's my complaint. The map is not that good. Um, when I was first playing this game, the longest the longest portion of the game was trying to figure out where the heck I was going and what I was doing because there's not a whole lot in the way of, of uh, geography details or anything like that, or even north or south or east or west. You just don't know. The only way to access the map is through altars or through that uh, little obelisk right there. And as you can see, the green dot represents where you're at, but again, you don't know which way to go initially. You just kind of wander around, and you don't know what the order of the the named ones is. You don't know exactly where the bosses are. You just kind of wander aimlessly. Now, because I've played it quite a lot on the PS4, I have a pretty good idea of where I'm going, but it is still possible for me to get lost because I can't um, check a map until I can find an altar. But as I said, it's a minor complaint because the world's not that big. It's, it's uh, fairly small. Uh, that little chime you heard was the save point uh, saving. There's... On, in the single player, it often seems like there's too many save points in between uh, different regions of the map. But the reason for that is because in online play, you may be attacked by another player character and die. And those just, those just make it so that you can respawn at an area closer to where you want to be. Okay, I just I'm I'm pause to do a slow pan because I really really like these graphics. Okay. And I believe I've probably made it abundantly clear at this point that I really like this game. Um but if I wasn't abundantly clear on that, um this is the game that after I after I bought it and I played through the single player, I uh, I sprung for a year of PSN Plus service so that I could play this online. I have not. I love Dark Souls three and uh, Dark Souls two, Sins of the First Scholar, but I still would not pay the the fifteen uh, fifty nine euros to sign up for PSN Plus for a year because I'm a cheapskate. Uh, but this game, it's like, wow, if the single player is this good, the uh, multiplayer must be super duper. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the money for it. And it is. Uh, 
provided there isn't lag. That is the one uh, problem of the game right now, but Slow Clap is, um, is addressing that uh, patch by patch. They're starting to get it under control. And I feel like if they can, if they can fix the lag so that the matches aren't, aren't, uh, so one-sided sometimes, it can, it will be very, very good. I mean, you can't really appreciate that against the, against the NPCs because they're pretty simplistic. They, their patterns aren't, aren't too complex. And as you can see here, what I'm what I'm doing is just trying to farm a couple of moves, and it can be tricky because although technically you can dodge to learn to move faster, you have to dodge at the last second. Um, if you start your dodge before the move is fully uh, set up, then you don't get the experience for it. Let's try and give an example. There we go. See? It, but it has to be at the last second. See? Uh, because I, I did the dodge too soon, I didn't learn that elbow move. Okay. And I could actually sit here and, and just... Uh block and dodge until those circles fill up but it takes a really long time and that's the the one complaint that some people have about the game that I I agree with a little bit that it can take a really long time to learn moves but once you've got them you go into meditation and you can do this from anywhere um, go to practice, go to edit combat deck, and then you can you can add in the moves that you've learned. See, then you get a little blinking circle to indicate the moves that you've that you've just learned, and then any moves that you're still learning, you can see the amount that you need or the amount of experience that you need to unlock them. So, edit exit practice. Uh, practice isn't really all that useful. I mean, you can you can see uh, what various combos look like uh, and how much stamina they'll use up, but your your dummy opponent doesn't show how much damage those attacks will do, and also doesn't fight back. So it's not really an effective way of understanding whether or not you've put together a an effective deck. Um, I have, during my first playthrough, I would put together moves that I thought looked good. Um, they, they certainly looked good in the practice, and I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna go out and use this, and almost immediately would get wrecked, even by NPCs, because the the flow of the moves wasn't very good. So there is there is a little bit of, of learning what moves to chain together and how best to use combinations of the uh, of the normal and alternate attacks. I want to say light and heavy, but that's not really. I mean, if you want to go all light attacks, even on your alternates, you can do that. So. And this guy has like a crap ton of health. And but he's the first marked one. And you have to defeat him to unlock the doors. Or unlock the door to the Tower of Adol.
Okay, and as you can see, uh, Rivario is one of the members of the uh, Forsaken School. So every once in a while you'll see him flash yellow, and that means he successfully parried. All of the marked ones do follow the, the same basic rules as you have to follow. They have schools, they have stamina, they have a crap ton of stamina, but they, you can drain it. And Rivario can be exploited quite easily precisely because so many of his moves are slow power moves that it is possible to just keep punching until he parries. Yeah, see, even though he parried and I was stunned, he went for a slow kick after that, so I had plenty of time to recover and then punch him in the face. Um, and as a as a point of reference, when I when I beat the the single player in uh, in two hours, I did it without changing any moves to my deck uh, or even to using any of the experience points or skill points that I got from leveling up. I went all the way to the end of the game just based off of off of the basic moves. And that's because the NPCs are very easy to exploit. Once you understand how to how to dodge or how to parry or how to absorb, you can pretty much wreck the the um, NPCs without much work. So gonna finish off this little area here. Stamina is very important in this game because, much like Dark Souls, uh, you use stamina up when you block. And so, um, you have to make sure you have enough to be able to guard against attacks. And if you can't, then you better get good at dodging. And obviously, I'm not good at dodging. <laughs> okay, just kidding. You can pick up uh, equipment to uh, modify your character's uh, appearance. Um, now, I don't know if they've if they've patched this just yet or not. I do know that they plan to, but uh, when you go into equipment and you add something else, you'll see that the weight is listed on the right uh, information box. And uh, the thing is, is that in, in theory, uh, adding heavier uh, clothing will make you slower and uh, it will also reduce the damage of some of your attacks because you're moving slower. Um, in practice though, it doesn't really seem to affect the speed of of um, either you or the uh, NPCs or the other player characters. As I said, I've heard that they're going to address this in a patch so that if you decide you want to wear the, the heavy-duty metal armor, then yeah, you're going to move slower. Um, which is fine for me because um, mostly what I like to wear is light stuff anyways. Okay, and I have, let's see, I have three points, so I'm going to put um, one in Dexterity, one in Vitality, and one in Endurance. And I think there's another item to collect. Although, maybe not over here. Oh, 
over here, yeah. Um, one of the ways that the game tries to push you into going online is that you can collect uh, clothing items from the lost prospects, but they, as you can see, what they're wearing is pretty tattered, and obviously, so whatever they drop is going to be uh, tattered and, and not in very good condition. If you want something that's in better condition, you have to go online and fight the, the player characters either in the overworld or in combat trials. Again, that's in theory, because the problem right now with the combat trials is that even if you win, you may not get anything at all, and um, or you may end up getting the same item over and over again, something that wasn't even attached to the person that you were fighting. So it can, it can be a little frustrating at times, because you... You know, you want some sweet gear, but trying to get it can be tricky. This is also something that is supposed to be addressed in, in later patches. Um, they're going to work on making it easier to get gear. But I can say that on the PS4, after uh, getting my character to, I think, around level 30 or so, I had some really, really nice looking gear, and that was all from single player. Um, once I got online and I got even more gear, uh, just, it, it really looks good. It, it's hard to, it's hard to explain, because right now I'm wearing basically jogging pants and, and, uh, and a cami top, so, but, but I promise you the gear looks great. Oh, right, sword. This will be the last thing that I show off before I end this episode. Um, throughout the world, you can find swords of varying quality. Um, and the sword has its own deck uh, of moves that you can unlock, uh, by, again, by blocking or dodging somebody who has a sword. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and drop this and convince him to pick it up. Her to pick it up. I'm sorry ma'am, I misgendered you. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm normally better about that. Yeah, you can see that, that these guys are, or these, well, all of them are women. Why am I saying guys? These ladies here are uh, clustered in too tightly, and so whenever they go for their big power moves, they're actually damaging each other. So, I don't have to do too much against them. Yeah, as you can see, I now have like three pairs of the same set of starting gloves because the loot drops can can be very repetitive. Nobody's going to pick up the sword and learn, and teach me any any sword form. So, I'm just going to go ahead and pick it up myself to demonstrate. Yeah. Um swords have uh various degrees of durability depending on what condition they're in. This one, if I if I tried to use it to block with it, like so, it would break pretty easily because it's very low durability. Um, later on, you unlock swords for your own use that um, you, can, you can summon them at the cost of focus points, and... Um, they have a higher durability than anything you'll find in the outer world when they break, and they will. Uh, you just, you, you have a little, a little timer on the side of it, kind of a cooldown bar, that as soon as, as soon as that cooldown bar finishes, uh, you can, 
you can go ahead and, and uh, summon your sword again, provided you have the focus for it. There is a catch, and it's a, it's a really good one, actually. If an enemy attacks you and disarms you, they can then pick up your sword and kill you with it. Uh, you can do the same to them. There's actually a trophy for it uh, called Double-Edged Sword, where you, uh, you get it for killing a player character with their own sword. And I've done it. It was deeply satisfying because that dude was kicking my butt. And he popped the sword, but he didn't have a very good sword deck. So I was able to exploit that, get the sword away from him, and then hack him into little bitty pieces. If I haven't made it abundantly clear already with all of my gushing praise in this first episode, I really, really like this game. Uh, it does have some flaws, but Slow Clap is working to address those, and uh, so, yeah. That concludes this first episode. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time. We'll Basically, the format that we're going to do is I'm going to uh, wander around. I'm going to find one marked one. I'm going to beat them down. That's the end of the episode. So if it takes me five minutes, it's a five-minute episode. If it takes me, well, okay, if it takes me five minutes, I'll probably go ahead and take on another marked one. But anyway, you get the idea. It's, these are going to be shorter episodes just to give you a taste of what the single player is like. After I've completed all of the single player content, then I'll start doing the, the online combat trials. And so, yeah, that's it for now. Uh, thank you for watching.